Hey guys, it's Mike with Dark Saint Studios, and today I'm going to be giving you a basic tutorial on uh, biped animation, as well as during that time I'm going to be doing a few tips and tricks about actual overall animation, as well as navigation within 3ds Max. So to get started, you want to have come to the create, or you can come up to create up here. Right, for over here, we're just going to start over here and going to come to create systems, and we're going to select biped and we're just going to drag out the biped. There we go. Now we're going to want to maximize this viewport. So if you come to this plus sign, you can do Alt W or maximize viewport. This just makes it easier to see. So now we're going to set up the biped. So uh, I usually use skeleton simply because of the way it looks, but there's multiple options, female, male, classic. I usually go with skeleton. Um, neck links I keep one, spine links I usually find that three is sufficient, neck links uh, just keep it at one, uh, three, none of these fingers, we're going to make five, and then finger links three, toes keep at one, and then toe links just make three, or one I'm sorry, and then I find that overall, if you're working with uh, the 3D, the COD 4 models, it's usually the height's going to be around 67. But in this case, uh, just to further all tutorial, the height doesn't really matter. Um, then we're going to come down to extras and twist links. We're going to open those up. We're going to enable twists. And the only ones we really need are the forearms. We're going to make those have two and that will come in handy for when you have your rigged models and I'll show you why in a bit and then extras um, you can use extras to make like the face um, models like eyes and uh, mouth for like jaws and stuff like that but for now I'm not going to make those because it would take too much time Alright, so now that we have our skeleton, um, we're going to want to come into the motion tab, and we're going to come into figure mode. And for this, we're going to come in, and this allows us to edit the bipod, biped. And uh, we're just going to want to make the toes, we're going to select symmetrical, we're going to just extend them out, just like that, so we get covers all the toes and this way uh, you can match up your character to the mesh that you have so that really doesn't matter at this point for this tutorial but when you're lining up your biped to your character mesh that's really important to make sure that you have all your fingers and that your feet and all the spine in certain areas line up so now let's get started on actually animating. So uh, usually when I see it, people are usually setting like have auto key on, and then they'll move it a little bit to set a keyframe. Uh, I'm going to show you how to use key info, which is the biped system for using keyframes and everything, and the different types of keyframes that there are. So. This tutorial, I'm just going to do. Uh, we'll do some crazy animation or whatever. Do something s a little funny. So we'll set the feet, and then over here you have the, your different types of keyframes. You have just regular set key, sliding key, free key, and plant a key. A free key, or we'll show you like this. A free key is a black key. A sliding key will be a yellow key. And a planted key will be orange. You can see that down here in the timeline. Now you might be asking, like, what is the difference? Well, over here we have a free key on this foot. On this foot, we have a planted key. If we move down, you'll notice that, that the foot stays in place. And that's because there's a planted key on that foot. That means it'll stay in its position as best it can unless you start going up in which case it will be able to stay on the ground 
it's essentially using FK and IK. It's reversing it. So and then so that's for planted keys and a planted a sliding key will do the exact same thing as a planted key for that. However, if you set a planted key over here, it will make it so this foot will always stay and hold the position of this keyframe. So this keyframe, the position of the foot and the rotation and everything will be try to be held by the uh, values of this keyframe over here. And then a free key, as you know, just moves to wherever. And because we set this keyframe over here, it moved it back down. Alright, so we're just going to just get rid of all this animation. And for the tra um, to move the overall biped, which is what I've been doing, you want to use track selection for if you clicked either body horizontal or body vertical and you have move on you'll be able to move it anyway you can see it changes when you go from up and down to side to side and then rotation switches it to rotate and you can rotate the entire biped sometimes I uh, I've run into people trying to like re rotate the biped by using the pelvis and it, you just make sure that you have to select this bone right here is the bone that allows you to move the entire biped so we'll do unhide all come through and we'll Delete, delete, and come in. And if you right click on these arrows, it will return everything to zero value. However, you don't want the biped center to return to the Z value of zero, because that would make them come down to here. So, let's start with the actual animation. So, we're going to want to set his pose first and we'll just set sliding keys that and forward a bit bring him forward just a tad Make sure that you have local uh, axis that you're working with. There's different ones like world, which will always be relative to the X, Y, Z of the world. There's the local, which is what I'm using right now, which is um, the X, the axis of the object. And then you have different things like parent, screen, view. I'm not going to get into those right now, but you can just experiment with them when you're trying to do certain things so we'll just set this hand oh. and make sure if for some reason you're tr you have the biped and you have all these parameters over here but for some reason nothing's working it's because you have the helpers that are included in the biped system and you just simply can't rotate those or anything like that so just make sure that you have the finger bone selected you might when trying to select things you might accidentally select one of the uh, helpers alright and then just a little tip trick if you want this arm to be the exact same over here you can simply double click on a bone and it will select all the bones linked to that bone then you can come over here to copy paste create a new collection uh, we'll name it tutorial and we'll do copy posture and then if you paste posture opposite you have the exact opposite posture posture 
And the same thing goes for poses. Uh, if you just have one, if, you have, if you're in pose over posture, you can do copy pose, and you have this entire pose that you have saved, you can use for another time. So, and then what you're going to want to do, uh, as you animate and you start finishing projects, it's a really good idea to save your collections. And I, as you can see, I have a few different collections already, like hand poses and uh, walking arm corrections and everything like that. And that way, you can load those collections. If I come down, if I come over to hand poses, postures, you see I have all these fist, pointing, f index finger. And that way, I don't have to go through and animate all the fingers again uh, in later projects. It's, it speeds up your animating process and your overall workflow, which is really nice and handy. Uh, but I'm not going to be using this collection, so... Uh, I'm just going to do delete collection and we'll stick with tutorial and I'll make and you can name all these um, postures and poses so we'll call this um, finger point finger point half alright so now uh, we're going to actually now that we have our initial pose we're going to actually start animating so, come down to like frame 10, we'll bring it down, rotate, and we want that to come up and out. And for any bone, you see how the head just stays there. When you have, when you start animating, you also notice that the spine, or no, the spine's right, but the head, there's no initial keyframe. So you got to make sure that whenever you start animating that you have all the keyframes set for your bones. You see the hip did the exact same thing. So we just want to come in, and this is where pose comes in handy and just do paste pose and now it sets a key for all of them and because we have sliding keys or well, we're going to want to set a sliding key for the foot so it stays in place and when you do paste pose it will make them all free keys unfortunately just as a tip gotta make sure that you reset your type of keys there we go, there's that, and we're going to want to make it do the exact opposite after 25. So what we can do is we can come into pose, copy pose, and then paste posture opposite. Now it's switched. But we want this arm to stay down a little bit more. So if you select the keyframe, you hold shift and you drag it, you can drag your keyframes out. And we're just going to make them having to start doing a crazy dance. And you'll notice that the feet are still moving even though you have this sliding key so you can set planted key and you'll see it snaps right back and your foot stays there and then we'll just do Paste posture again. He's doing this really weird dance. But overall, I think I've covered most of the basics and how to use all the keys and everything, the different types of keys uh, for this tutorial. Uh, I'm going to be continuing on this tutorial series uh, with doing a little bit more in-depth stuff with IK, 
uh, the TCB for like keyframes, how to change the ease in and ease out of keyframes because the curve editor, the traditional curve editor for biped keys uh, just doesn't work that well. Uh, I'll be covering motion flow, um, footstep mode, and a few other things. I had actually initially forgotten ha after finishing, so I'm interjecting this halfway through the video. Uh, the point of having these, um, if you do unfreeze all, the point of having these twists in the forearm, you see it for twist, if you have a hand and you rotate it, and will hide the forearm itself. Other hand, you can see that it's like the bone is splitting in half, and uh, it's better for um, wrist rotation because a um, problem with bones if you have the hands and just the forearm there when you start. Um, skinning your mesh and everything, and you make these twists, you'll find that um, the wrist always seems to get really messed up, and um, just like when you move, when you twist your hand, you can also see that your forearm uh, twists as well a little bit, and that's what these uh, forearm twists help with. If you have it where it's just your forearm and your hand, and you rotate it downwards, this will be fine. When you rotate forwards if you don't have the twists because you'll have your skinning info for the arms connected to the arm and the skinning info for the hands connected to the hands but when you start twisting you'll find that only the hand twists and not the forearm skin and it creates problems with uh, twisting at the at the wrist and so uh, these forearm twists are for that purpose for skinning and it just helps overall so now back to so anyways, um, if you want, I also offer private lessons for $15 an hour, and a few people have taken up on me, taken me up on it, and they've, uh, they've expressed that they've really learned a lot from them, and that they're happy, it was a good investment, so if you want to have private lessons via Skype, I will sit with you, and we will go through whatever you want to learn, uh, as far as animation, and modeling, and just overall working with 3ds max um, in addition if you have questions feel free to ask um, anyways hope you guys learned something talk to you guys later